Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to introduce VMM 1.2. So VMM stands for the Verification Methodology Manual for System Verilog. In VMM 1.2, as you'd expect, adds many new features to VMM. However, it's still backward compatible with the earlier versions of VMM. VMM 1.2 includes the VMM applications that were previously separate from the standard base classes, including the register abstraction layer and the sub-env. VMM is now released under an Apache open source license. In this particular video, I'm going to focus on the new, v new features of VMM 1.2 and the new conceptual framework that goes with them. So VMM 1.2 adds implicit phasing that helps in reusing verification components and with test concatenation. VMM 1.2 adds new communication features borrowed from the OSCE TLM 2.0 standard. It exploits parameterized base classes in System Verilog, has a new factory API, has new features for name and pattern matching, and for hierarchical configuration and RTL configuration. So in VMM, you build a reusable verification environment that exercises the design under test. That verification environment is then exercised by a series of tests. Each of the tests is usually relatively small and makes just minor modifications or customizations to the verification environment. VMM 1.2 allows you to run together a series of tests, so-called test concatenation, all within a single simulation run. The verification environment in VMM has a layered structure. The signal layer consists of a system Verilog interface, which contains the pin level interface to the design under test. Then comes the command layer, which consists of a number of transactors, such as drivers, monitors and checkers. And the thing that characterises transactors at the command layer is that they deal with single atomic transactions and convert those into pin wiggles on the design under test. Then come one or more functional layers corresponding to the protocol stack in the verification environment. And each of the transactors at the functional layer typically convert complex transactions down into simple atomic transactions. Then comes the scenario layer, where we have a number of generators. And VMM actually provides two types of generator, the atomic generator and the multi-stream generator. The transactors in the verification environment are then customised using individual tests in the, from the test layer. Transactors in VMM are created by extending the base class VMM exactor. And multiple tra transactors can be grouped together hierarchically. The way in which this is done has changed slightly in VMM 1.2. So in all previous versions of VMM, transactors were grouped together using the VMM env and VMM sub -env classes. Now in VMM 1.2, we also have the VMM group class, which makes use of so-called implicit phasing in order to run the transactors. The transactors communicate using a VMM channel. VMM channels act as a conduit for passing around transactions. And the transactions themselves extend the VMM data class. And finally, the behaviour of the individual transactors and transactions can be customised from each test by making use of VMM callbacks. So a test would register its own callbacks with the transactors and therefore would be able to modify the behaviour of the transactors at runtime for example, to introduce errors into the transactions. Now I'll say a few words about explicit versus implicit phasing. With explicit phasing, phases are controlled by a single VMM env component. And that env component is able to start and stop individual transactors, or in particular, the thread within the transactor that's represented by the main method. So the key to explicit phasing is that the actual work within transactors is done by the main method, and the main method is started and stopped explicitly from the phases of the env. And that gives you very fine-grained control over exactly how transactors start and stop. The execution of an individual transactor can actually span several explicit phases. With implicit phasing, 
Every transactor and every VNM group has its own definition of the phase methods, and those phase methods are called automatically within the corresponding phases. What you lose, however, is the fine-grained control over the ability to start and stop transactors. With implicit phasing, each phase method must return in order for that particular phase to complete. VMM 1.2 also adds new communication mechanisms inspired by the system CTLM 2.0 standard. So whereas in previous versions of VMM, transactors would typically communicate using channels, VMM 1.2 adds the option of using ports and exports from the system C standard. The advantage of ports and exports is that they provide a very clean model for communication, synchronisation and for determining when a transaction is complete. So in VMM 1.2 we can try and have the best of both worlds by using a blocking transport port when sending out transactions from a producer and coupling that to a channel in the consumer. For sending transactions to a passive verification component such as a scoreboard, VMM 1.2 makes use of the analysis interface from the TLM 2.0 standard. So transactors can send out transactions through an analysis port and those transactions can be broadcast to zero or one or more than one passive component like a scoreboard for analysis. Let's dive down into the producer and have a look at an example of how this might work. So at the top of the slide you can see an instance of the new VMM TLM B transport board, the blocking transport board. In the centre we can see a transaction being randomised and then at the bottom that transaction is sent out by calling the B transport method. I mentioned the clean semantics of TLM 2.0. Using B transport ensures that the transaction is completed by the time this method call returns. If we want to modify the behaviour of the transactor on the fly, that's still done by making use of VMM callbacks. So in this example we can see callbacks being called immediately before and after the call to B transport in order to modify the transaction for a particular test. Then in order to send that transaction off to a passive analysis component like a scoreboard, we can make use of the TLM2 inspired analysis port. So we can see the declaration of a VMM TLM analysis port at the top, and then we're sending the transaction out through the analysis port by calling the right method at the bottom of the slide. The transaction itself is stored in a variable randomised TX. And we're using that variable on the next slide to illustrate the new factory API in VMM 1.2. So the transaction is created by calling the factory method createInstance. And the significant thing about factory methods is that you can modify their behaviour on the fly to actually change the type of the object that they create. In this case, the type of the transaction that's being randomised. So a particular test, test 2 in this example, is calling the override with new method to change the type of the transaction that's generated for this particular test. We're also illustrating the use of the new pattern matching features in VMM 1.2. So the override with new method will actually cause every instance of my TX that's created with a factory to be replaced with an instance of alt TX throughout the entire hierarchy. So I've briefly described implicit phasing, TLM 2.0 communication and the new factory API. VMM 1.2 also adds parameterised base classes and has an updated configuration mechanism. If you want to know more, then we at Dulos can help you. We provide training classes, in particular classes in System Verilog or in VMM. If you visit our website, you can find details of our training courses and you can also find further details on VMM itself.